Manila, a leadership row erupted in the Philippine House of Representatives on live TV Monday, delaying President Rodrigo Duterte's delivery of his annual State of the Nation address and passage of crucial Muslim autonomy legislation aimed at ending one of Asia's longest Islamic rebellions. Duterte, 73, used much of his third annual State of the Nation address to defend his deadly war on drug users and dealers, saying he would not be cowed by human rights advocates. Former Philippine President Gloria Arroyo sits at the center stage of the plenary hall as she attempts to grab the leadership at the House of Representatives before Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's State of the Nation address at Congress in Manila on Monday. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte pledged Monday not to halt his war on drugs that has already killed thousands, as he thrashed critics who have rained condemnation on his signature initiative, No El Celis, AFP, Getty Images, when illegal drug operations turn nasty and bloody. Advocates of human rights mock our law enforcers and this administration to no end, he said. Sadly, I have yet to really hear howls of protest from human rights advocates and church leaders against drug lordism, drug dealing and drug pushing as forceful and vociferous, your concern is human rights, Duterte added. Mine is human lives, the war against illegal drugs is far from over, he said. Where before, the war resulted in the seizure of illegal drugs worth millions of pesos, today they run into billions in peso value, article continued below Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, backed by dozens of allied legislators, took the main seat in the center stage of the House's plenary hall in a sign that she was taking over the post of House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez. Arroyo, a former president, tried to speak from the stage during the dramatic standoff but her microphone was turned off. She tried to yell, apparently to explain what was happening, but later stepped down from the stage, waving at the crowd. Alvarez, along with Senate President Vicente Sato III, fetched Duterte and led the visibly confused leader to a holding room as the dispute over House leadership unfolded in the chamber, which was packed with foreign diplomats, legislators and other dignitaries. Alvarez and Arroyo are close to Turt supporters in the 292-member House, which is largely dominated by the president's allies. They chose to disrespect their own president and attend to their own ambitions in full view of the nation. For almost an hour, it seemed that nobody was in control, opposition Senator Reza Hontivero said, this is the true state of the nation. It is petty infighting, backstabbing, and brinkmanship, all done at the people's expense, Hanteveros said. Others called the squabble a circus that bear the deep crack in Duterte's ruling coalition. An arrangement was later reached allowing Alvarez to lead the joint session with Sato to break the impasse, which delayed the president's speech for more than an hour. Backed by nearly 200 legislators, Arroyo was sworn in late Monday as the new House Speaker in an impressive political comeback. The 71-year-old ex-economics professor and classmate of former U.S. President Bill Clinton at Georgetown University was detained in a hospital in 2012 for nearly four years for alleged large-scale corruption but the Supreme Court dismissed the case and ordered her freed. Article continued below read more, Philippines Rodrigo Duterte slammed for calling God, stupid Philippines Duterte threatens authoritarian rule over relentless criticism of presidency mouth jets Duterte in trouble again, this time for kiss the leadership row earlier prevented the House from ratifying a Muslim autonomy bill that was part of a peace deal with the 11,000 strong Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Earlier Monday, the Senate unanimously ratified the bill, which would establish a new bank's Amoro autonomous region in the country's south, but House members adjourned early due to the infighting. The government had negotiated the pact for more than two decades with the largest Muslim insurgent group in the south. Duterte had been expected to sign the autonomy bill into law on Monday and highlighted in his State of the Nation speech. The peace deal, which he promised to sign within 48 hours, is a bright spot in his two-year presidency, which has come under heavy criticism over his human rights record, deadly anti-drug crackdown and vulgar language. I make the solemn commitment that this administration will never deny our Muslim brothers and sisters the basic legal tools to charter their own destiny within the constitutional framework of our country. Duterte said,
Thousands of flag-waving protesters rallied outside the house and burned his effigy. They condemned him for the drug killings and for failing to ease poverty and inflation. There was no immediate reaction from the Muslim rebels over the latest delay in achieving the Malaysian-brokered peace deal, which seeks to replace an earlier poverty and conflict-wrecked autonomous region with a potentially larger, better-funded and more powerful region for minority Muslims in the south of the largely Roman Catholic nation. The proposed deal is the latest significant attempt by the government to negotiate an end to nearly half a century of on-and-off Muslim fighting that has left more than 120,000 people dead and hampered development in the country's poorest regions. The two largest Muslim rebel groups in the South have dropped their demands for a separate Muslim state in exchange for autonomy and have renounced terrorism. Western governments, however, have worried about the presence of small numbers of Islamic State group-linked militants from the Middle East and Southeast Asia seeking combat training in collaboration with Filipino insurgents. Last year, heavily armed Filipino insurgents who have sworn allegiance to Daesh, also known as ISIS or ISIL, along with dozens of foreign fighters, laid siege to the southern Islamic city of Marawi. Troops backed by U.S. and Australian surveillance aircraft routed the militants after five months of airstrikes and ground assaults that left more than 1,200 people, mostly Islamic fighters, dead and the mosque-studded city in ruins. Aside from the Muslim Autonomy Pact, Duterte reaffirmed his resolve to fight illegal drugs and introduced a draft constitution that would shift the country to a federal system of governance. The moves, including opening the country's 1987 constitution to amendment, have been opposed by several groups and opposition politicians, who fear they are designed to prolong Duterte's rule and give him dictatorial powers. Duterte, who took office in 2016, has played down such fears, saying he was ready to step down as early as next year and cut short his six-year term if a new federal government is set in place. I have no illusions of occupying this office one day longer than what the constitution under which I was elected permits or under whatever constitution there might be, Duterte said.